you know? During the lifespan of the Super Famicom Satellaview add-on, Nintendo experimented with publishing digital magazines. This was done with an officially licensed Mario Virtual Magazine, called Shitamache Ninjo Gakijo, which translates as Lower City Empathy Theatre in English. What's most surprising about the magazine are the adult jokes and illustrations within it. The images within depict Mario smoking a cigarette, Mario committing physical assault, and even showing a lewd act between Peach and Toad. The actual data for the magazine is currently lost, but a total of six issues are known to exist. However, only segments of the sixth episode have been found so far. Another Satellaview title, BS Super Mario Collection, has some interesting facts surrounding it. The collection was a remixed version of Super Mario All-Stars for the Satellaview that was released in four parts and was broadcast over four weeks. During the broadcast, music would be played as well as voice acting from celebrities who would give helpful hints and advice. During one Mario Collection broadcast, Nintendo played Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley over the game, as well as Never Ending Story by Lamal and Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins. <laughs> There's another rare title that was also exclusive to Japan called Boo Boo Mario. The game is aimed at younger children and is an arcade and ride hybrid released in 1993 exclusively in Japan. The game plays out in two phases, one where the player steers left and right to avoid rocks and jumps over fissures in the ground. This is followed by another phase where the player has to jump on Mecha Koopas that are being thrown by Bowser. Boo Boo Mario may be hard to find, but some games are even more obscure, due in part to them never being released. Yoshi Racing is a rejected pitch for a 3D character racing game in the Yoshi franchise. The game was revealed in a Eurogamer article that delved into Argonaut games and the development of Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Originally, the game was described as a 3D platformer and left unnamed. However, an ex-Argonaut employee would later name the project and describe it as a 3D racing game. This game seems to be the same project that later evolved into Croc, but before the project became more of a 3D platformer. The Mario series has plenty of secrets in its less obscure games as well. 2015's Super Mario Bros. Encyclopedia explains one quirk about Super Mario Sunshine that many fans have wondered about for years. The Yoshis in the game are destroyed when they come into contact with water, similar to the game's enemies. This is actually because all Yoshis in the game are from the magic paintbrush wielded by Bowser Jr., just like the enemies. Another detail about Sunshine that often goes unnoticed is hidden in plain sight near the start of the game. During Sunshine's opening cutscene, multiple cuts of Peach on the airstrip seem to have an error where the texture for her earring uses the texture for her eyes. This mistake is fixed from her first close-up onward, but it's strange how this mistake managed to happen at all. In Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Rabbid Princess Peach originally had an animation inspired by Sailor Moon. While the sequence was cut from the game, director Davide Soliani jokingly stated that the test sequence was made by animators who started to go stir crazy crazy from working so hard. Another obscure reference can be found in a 30 minute long Japan only VHS tape made to promote Mario Paint on the SNES. At one point in the video, the footage shows what seems to be a crude drawing of a nude woman made with the game's brush tools. This is actually a recreation of the painting New Rose by French artist Henri Matisse. In an interview promoting Super Nintendo Classic Edition, artist Shigafumi Hino confirmed that Mario is hitting Yoshi to make him spit out his tongue in Mario World. Hino said, Actually, we did the animation with the idea that Mario was hitting Yoshi on the head and Yoshi is sticking out his tongue in surprise. There's even a bonk sound but we thought people would feel sorry for Yoshi, so we decided to pass it off as Mario saying, Go! The book, The Art of Super Mario Odyssey, reveals that Rosalina was going to appear in the game as a non-playable character at some point. The book also reveals several unused outfits for Mario, such as a green Sprixie princess from Super Mario 3D World, a Toadette costume, a costume of a Luma from Super Mario Galaxy, and a costume of Mario in a Japanese schoolgirl outfit. Another game that showed Mario in a unique outfit is Sega's Alex Kidd in Shinobi World, or at least the game's beta build did. During the development of Shinobi World, the first boss, Kabuto, was planned to be a parody of Mario. He would have had a moustache, and his name was Mario, a play on words that actually means King Mari. This reference was dropped in the final release due to the possible copyright concerns. The secret still remains in some form, however, as Kabuto shoots fireballs and shrinks when the player has inflicted enough damage to him, just like Mario.
One interesting detail about Mario Party 9 doesn't appear within the game, but on its cover. Luigi is absent from the Japanese box art of Mario Party 9, and was even missing from the pre-release North American box as well. Fans seem to have noticed this, and were disappointed that Nintendo left Luigi out of the spotlight. Perhaps due to the small outcry from fans, Luigi was added to the North American cover before the game's Western release. Another oversight that took Nintendo far longer to notice is from Super Mario World. In the game, Bowser's skin is green, and not his usual orange tone. This wasn't an aesthetic choice, however, this was actually a mistake. Super Mario World artist Shigafumi Hino didn't notice the error until Nintendo were importing the game's art assets into Super Mario Maker around 25 years after the game's release. Other Mario enemies have secrets too. In Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, when tattling up a bomb named Fred in Far Outpost, Gumbella says, that Fred, he's not very freaky for a Fred though. What? Not all Freds are freaky. News to me. This is a possible reference to the character Freaky Fred from Cartoon Network's Courage the Cowardly Dog. It's also absolutely impossible to lose the first battle against Lord Crump in Thousand Year Door. Even if Mario falls into the water until he only has 1 HP, the game will start the battle with 5 HP. Mario's only option are to attack or defend, and he'll defend perfectly every time. Since Crump and Mario both have 5 HP and Mario takes the first turn, Crump cannot win. Mario enemies also have interesting facts around them even in the series' earliest games. In Super Mario Bros. 3, if a muncher is hit with Raccoon Mario's tail attack, it will turn him into a block. This trick was carried over to the All-Stars version of the game on the SNES, but not Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3 on the Game Boy Advance. The long-running Mario enemy, Lakitu, is called Jugemu in Japan. This name comes from a folk tale where a couple couldn't think of a good name for their newborn baby boy. In the tale, the father consulted the chief priest in the area to think of a name. The priest had a few suggestions, but also couldn't decide on a single name. They ended up mixing up all the names together into one big name, which is shown on the screen right now. Another interesting enemy secret is that the tanuki-tailed Bowser in Super Mario 3D Land is actually a Goomba using a Super Leaf. This was done as an homage to the original Super Mario Bros. game, where all the Bowsers before the final castle were enemies disguised as Bowser. Earlier portable Mario titles have Easter eggs too. In Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, the first Space Zone level features stars that spell out happy. However, most of these stars cannot be seen during normal gameplay, with the player only being able able to see the letter Y by jumping up and to the left of the second money bag. The word can only be seen in its entirety with the aid of hacking or a cheat device. Many people cite Mario Teaches Typing as the first game where Charles Martinet provided the voice of Mario. However, one Nintendo game predates even this. The Super Mario Bros. Pinball Arcade Machine featured samples of Martinet as Mario, and released several months before Mario Teaches Typing. During Super Mario Bros. 30th anniversary at the Nintendo Store in New York City, original Super Mario Bros. planning sheets were put on display. One of these sheets happened to show an early version of the game's title screen, which featured a different logo and a fence on the right of the screen. Another interesting fact is that the first track on the officially licensed Mario album, Sound Mario Brothers, is titled Super Mario Brothers Odyssey. This was over 30 years before the release of Super Mario Odyssey. Unfortunately, the track itself is more reminiscent of Star Wars than it is of Mario. Speaking of movies, six months after the US release of Super Paper Mario, film director and producer Seth Gordon showed an interest in making a movie based on the game. The Pixels movie producer was quoted as saying, I'd love, really love to adapt Super Paper Mario into a movie. A movie that could constantly switch from 2D to 3D. In five years, 3D cinema is going to be really big. Gordon, however, specified that he'd never had the chance to speak with Nintendo about his envisioned project, so his idea was eventually forgotten. Did you also know that the Isle Delfino from Mario Sunshine was originally going to appear on the world map in Super Mario Odyssey? Or that Odyssey actually affected how the Nintendo Switch console was designed? For more facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Super Mario Odyssey, or if you want more Nintendo, check out our video on obscure Pokemon facts.